God releases it. prophetic insight. Everyone say insight. Insight is associated with CNN. Does everybody get it? CNN. Now, while we were praising and worshiping, uh, I saw like a, a, a TV. You know what TV is? Tell a vision. Tell a what? Say it. Tell a vision. And it also has channels on it, doesn't it? So channels is known as channeling. That's why Hollywood is witchcraft. Hollywood is the stick witches use. It's Hollywood. Amen? So in this, and you've heard this before, but I want to share some things before we get going here. I saw... What's that robot? Wally. I saw Wally. Doesn't he have a TV here? Yeah. I saw Wally. <laughs> Viva. Is that what is it? Yeah. Eva. And it was something. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie anyways. It's funny. <laughs> anyway. So I saw a Wally. <laughs> and there was a battle over chaining channels channels or remote there was a battle there it was fighting back and forth wanting to change the channel we see that in households today man we get freaky when we can't find our remote control amen where is it <laughs> but it, and this is what's happening right now in the spirit does everybody understand there's a battle over channeling, changing the channels. Why? So we don't see correctly. The Lord said to me that what's creating these things, is what we're going to ca call it is emotional visions or emotional sight. How many of y'all know that your desire and emotion can create a vision? Amen? Amen? Heck, if you hear something enough times, you're going to begin to see it. Go to Romans 12. Everybody has emotion. It's the thing that drives us. Amen? It's a desire. Our old man is, hits life is the life of the body is in the blood. Now, the Bible tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood, but it's a representation of the body because the flesh is a character. Everyone say the flesh is a character. It's the character and the offspring of the devil. That's why God hates flesh. Does everybody get it? So in this, not only is your flesh battling over channels. But your emotions are battling over channels. The voices are battling over the channels and desires are battling over channels. So everybody got it? <laughs> well, there's only one channel that connects. Hallelujah. And Romans 12, thank you, Master. In verse 1, let's speak this together, please. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or your reasonable service. Now, here's the kicker in verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, let's talk about the mind again. What is your mind? It is the storage location of memory. It is the what? Storage location of memory. And it is the meeting place of thoughts. Your mind is the storage location of memory and the meeting place of thoughts. 
Now, your mind is directly connected to the heart. And what is the heart? It is the core of all what? Desire. Emotion. Okay, so your mind is the storage location of memory in the meeting place of thoughts. It is directly connected to the heart of desire or emotion, and it expresses its contents. In other words, what's in it? Of its storage, you know, what's in it? How does it ex express its contents? Through words, through vision, through attitude, through conduct, and through desire. I'll repeat them. How does the heart express itself? Through our words, our vision, attitudes, conduct, and desire. That's why renewing our mind is restoring that's why we want to have the what? The mind of Christ. Why? What's the mind of Christ? It is the storage of God's thoughts and words. Does everybody get it? It's the storage location of what? God's thoughts and words. That's why we're to have the mind of Christ. So we are renewing our mind, our storage unit, with godly thoughts and godly words, godly desires, amen? Now, these connections to the heart will, will place in your heart godly desires, godly visions. Everybody get it? It will change everything around. So we're to renew our refresh, reconnect, renew, reestablish our thoughts. The Bible says that our warfare is to cast down what? All thoughts and imaginations, emotional attachments of people, places, and things, mindsets and strongholds, which is a memory lie, which has infiltrated our storage units. So when a memory lie, which is a stronghold, has infiltrated a storage unit, it begins to contaminate the whole unit. Does everybody get this? Oh, hallelujah. So, verse 2 again. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts. In other words, your storage unit by putting new godly thoughts in. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Why? Because if it's not being renewed, how can you prove God's will? You can't. How do you know if it's God or not? For I say to the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, do not think himself more highly than he ought to think that you are more special than someone else. But to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberty, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what? What is good? What's the next verse? Be kind, kindly, affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly, in prayer, and distributing to the needs of those of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. 
And do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. And do not be wise in your own opinion. Whoa, ho, ho. That says it all. You can go home now. <laughs> First Timothy 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Deceiving or deceptive spirits and doctrines of demons. I mean, this is so, I mean, it's all over the place. Amen? It's a warning of deceptive spirits that will infiltrate humanity through their words and vision to entice the lusting of the eyes the pride of life, or the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the flesh, and promote rebellion and corruption. Remember this. The enemy is always to try to give you something false. That's his job. False vision, false desires. Anything to move us out of the place of divine order. And he does it very well. Remember, the enemy is always trying to get us out of position. Amen. Everything he wants to bring to us is a lie. I mean, he's the father of lies, right? So it's got to be false. He wants to bring falseness. Because if you promote something on, that's falseness, amen, then it's deception. If it's deception and a person begins to walk in it and accept it, it opens the door to the devil. Demons then have access. James 1. You could be talking to somebody, man, they could be talking about something. They could be talking about a beautiful car. They could be talking about a popsicle. And they can explain it with drooling words. And it can create such an enticement to you that you see it. Yes, I want it! That's how the enemy operates. Amen? He doesn't just do it once. He pounds it. But he does it in a manner of a gentleness. This is what, it's how sly he is. He slides right in. And he takes advantage of the weak and the immature. James 1, verse 12. Is everybody there? Good, I'll be right there. <laughs> Let's speak it. Blessed is the man who endures what? Temptation. In other words, overcomes it. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of which the Lord has promised to those who love him as a reward. But let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own what? Desires, emotion, and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to what? Sin. So this desire is not from God, is it? Amen? If it's conceiving and giving birth to sin, it's certainly not from God. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. So in this, blessed the overcomer and cursed to the one that's not overcomer. Amen? We are drawn away from the mind and the heart of Christ, and it's refocused on self, lust, false vision, and it produces false perceptions, things that you perceive about something. It's like television in you. Amen? Think about this. You got lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Look at what the media promotes. Amen? You can change channels and still get the same lie. It's just repeated. If it's repeated enough times, people will believe it. Amen? Remember, we are in a time of great deception, great demonic influence, deceptive spirits, 
and their promotion emotional vision. The Bible warns us about false prophets. It's not about false prophets, it's false prophecies. Does everybody get it? They're all over the place because the Lord said nothing's going to come to pass unless it comes through the prophets first. Now, there are prophets to the nations. There's a spirit of prophecy. Amen. But the enemy knows that prophecies that are given that are false bring a curse. Does everybody get it? He knows that. So he's trying to infiltrate in all areas and battling over the channel changer, which is in your soul. Where is it? Your soul. And what is your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, your conscience, subconscious, amen? All of that. So you must look in the area of, you got a TV in there, man. It's called insight. What channel are you on? What about pornography? It's got its own channel. It's destroying America. It's destroying children. Lies and deception. Perversion. All of these things. Sex operations. Take a man to become a woman and a woman to become a man. All of these things. These, how did that get there? Through what? A vision. It had to come through words that were creating a vision in someone. And then that vision was creating a desire, and that desire went to the heart. And now it's conceived and brought the presence of evil. And it's all over the world. All over. And we as the body of Christ are to be stepping up above this and driving them out. Let me tell you, the other day, my wife, myself, and some other person... We saw familiar spirits on our campus. We said, we need to bind blind and remove these spirits out of here because familiar spirits are infiltrating the body of Christ. Go to 2 Corinthians 4, 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Whose minds the God of this age has what? blinded in other words they can't see they're getting a false vision who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is in the image of God should shine on them wow so we see demonic forces of the antichrist blind humanity from renewing the mind of Christ from getting into place and renewing into the mind of Christ so that his desires can be seen and expressed the enemy has stolen the remote control. And he's utilizing it and changing channels and reconnecting God's people to familiar spirits, divination spirits, deceiving spirits, lying spirits. It's 1 Corinthians 15. And I've never seen so many prophetic words on the internet in my life. Everybody's got a word from the Lord today. There got to be 14 of them in one section. There's got to be at least a thousand total. Everybody's got to, the Lord showed me this today. I had a vision of the Lord this. See, it's creating such a desire that people are trying to get a vision from God and the enemy sees it and he's changing the channel and they're getting a vision from the enemy. And then they're releasing false things. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Let's speak it, please. Do not be what? Don't be what? Disease. Evil company. What's evil company? It's a presence of evil. It means demonic presence Demons are present, either in a person that's near you or influencing you. Does everybody get it? Listen, if a person's head doesn't have to spin for them to have a demon, amen, their eyes don't have to look reptilian either. They can look normal, and they can have a load of demons. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts what? 
Good habits, so associations bring impartations. Proverbs 22. Look at verse 24 here in uh, uh, Proverbs 22. What does it say? Make no friendship with an angry man or with a furious man. Do not go, lest you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. In other words, turn your channel. Amen? Turn your channel. Learn. Association, snare. What's he trying to do? Snare your mind and emotion so he can create a what? False vision or emotional vision. Third John chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your what? Your soul prospers. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations. Amen. Your TV gets a tune-up. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. Souls. As your soul prospers, that means there's a conversion process, isn't there? And that process is endless. It never stops. Hallelujah. You got to be careful because the enemy will constantly promote deception. Amen. That's his job. Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. His power is what? Fear. It has not stopped. Second Corinthians six. And I had a vision one day in about the three winds of the Lord. And there were whirlwinds. You know, when we were doing services in the park, it'd be hot as can be. And I'm going to tell you this. When we all lifted our hands, we asked for the wind of God to come. He came with fresh air conditioning every time. Anybody that was there, remember? We would just lift our hands and just say, Lord, we need a fresh breeze from here. And all of a sudden, and it'd be cool. It wouldn't be like a warm, it would be cool. Anyways, and this was a couple years ago, two or three years ago, the Lord showed me three whirlwinds. And the things are connecting now. And the first whirlwind that came was tearing off rooftops. It was opening like sardine cans almost, you know. It was exposing all tops of things. It was exposing people. And its purpose was exposure. God said, I'm going to tear back in the veil that the enemy has been hiding under. And that whirlwind continued. And it got stronger and stronger and stronger. And look how strong it is now. It's going to still get stronger. And he said the second whirlwind will bring provision and strategy. And I saw, like, almost like bales of money coming, falling from the skies, and, 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 and strategy, and, and armory, and weaponry, and, and things to that degree coming to the body of Christ. And the third world, when I saw, came and took the body of Christ off the earth. So we are in the first and the second whirlwind, and, and the whirlwind hasn't stopped. It's increasing. Now, I'm sharing that to share this other part. Because the other day, the Lord was revealing to me, I shared with my wife, I said, you know, we talked about the early and latter rain coming. Well, when you study the, uh, when you go to the book of Elijah, you know, when you read about Elijah and Elisha, Remember, he followed him to multiple locations. Remember, he, he saw him. He threw the mantle on him. He did the what? He threw the what? Mantle, the call, the anointing. So he threw the mantle on him already once, right? Now, Elijah was plowing. He had 12 oxen or whatever. He, he was from a family of wealth. And so he said, wait a minute. Let me go kiss mom and dad goodbye. 
let me hug my honey, and then I'll follow you. Elijah's, no way. He walked away. What have I done to you, he said. Elisha, got it. Woo! He took the whole plow, cut it all up, made a fire on it, killed the oxen, and offered up a sacrifice to the Lord. He said, you know what he said? I'm burning my past. I'm following. Why? Because the anointing was on him now. Now he followed Elijah all the way to all of the events that he had. And everywhere he went, all the other prophets, they were all saying, man, you know your master is going home today. And they were trying to discourage him. He says, yeah, I know, but be quiet. So Elijah would tell Elisha, listen, I'm going to the next place. Oh, far be it, Lord. I'm following you all the way. He followed him all the way. When he got to the final place, he said to him, what do you want? He said a double portion of the anointing. In other words, he wanted an additional mantle. He says, if you see me go up in the whirlwind, in the what? Whirlwind. I'll release that mantle to you. I'm telling you, we're in the second whirlwind, and that mantle's going to be released to everyone that makes it to that place. There's going to be a double portion of the anointing on God's people in a powerful, powerful way. But we got to be willing to get through all this and not allow these false visions and all of this other stuff deceive us, fear. we got to come to the end of ourselves and let God be God and be, we be His children so that we can be expressing Him and not us. Amen? That's, that mantle is going to be released to fulfill this end time harvest. And we got to be in. And you know what? We can't lose focus then. We can't give up. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. All right, 2 Corinthians 6 something. 11. Is everybody there? O oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own what? Affections or what? Desires. Hallelujah. Now in return for the same, I speak to you as what? Children, because you're immature. You also be open. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked together with what? That's associations, aren't they? See, people are associating with familiar spirits. And demons that don't even know it. And it's causing false vision, false perception, up and down emotions, all kinds of stuff. See, if you're not steadfast in everything, you know something's there. Something's there. There's a demon there. If you don't take care of it, it's going to take care of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Restricted by emotional affections influenced by the presence of evil. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Therefore, I want remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you to the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear. But power, love, and sound mind. So if fear is there, what happens? There's no power. There's no love. Not true love of God. And there's no sound mind. Unstable. Does everybody get it? And that is a spirit. It is a what? A spirit. It's called a spirit of fear. You know, I always share with people... You know, people are bound by religion. They're, they have a spirit of fear and pride. And the fear is that the pride won't find out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So power, love, and a sound mind is diminishing daily as many fall asleep into the trances of deception through false words and visions, what we call television, radio, TV, movies, music. They promote fear with wars and lack of uh, lack of food and lack of provision and viruses, plagues and diseases, money collapsing, <laughs> drug overdoses. 
There's a lot of drug overdose. Of course, they're bringing all the dope in, the government is. You know, the an Antichrist regimes. They're the smugglers. Common use of alcohol and drugs. I mean, think about this. The common use of alcohol and drugs on TV all the time. No matter what you're watching, oh, let's take a break and have a drink. I mean, uh, what's it called? Virgin River. That guy owns a bar. You know, I mean, everything is associated with, even when they do good things, they're always taking a break with drinks. Oh, I'm stressed out. <laughs> so they're always promoting the vision, something that's harmful. To but it's become common. Look at, uh, what do you call those things? Um, soap operas. It's soft porn. I'm telling you, soap operas are soft porn. I remember coming home from school every day and they were on my mother's TV. They were nothing but a, a bunch of Luciferians. And now you got these reality shows. They're nothing but soft porn. Now they got these people that are just sleeping with one another. And say, I'm going to choose you today and you. And I'm like, what the snap? Now the gods has been, God has been kicked out of everything. But he's kicking them out of everything now. It's coming to an end. But all of this is promoting nothing but vision. Amen? False vision and false perception. Hallelujah. So where there's fear, there, there's, <laughs> it's a spirit. There won't be a sound mind. There won't be true love. Amen? And there won't be power. Leviticus 20, verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Again, you shall say to the children of Israel, Whoever the children of Israel or the strangers who dwell in Israel, who gives any of his des descendants to Moloch, he shall surely be put to death. Now, Moloch is where it was a statue they used to, his arms were out, they would heat it up, and they would put their children on, or they'd put them through the fire. Today, Moloch is the overseer of abortion. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from his people because he has given some of his descendants to Moloch to defile my sanctuary and profane my holy name. And if the people of the land should in any way hide their eyes from the man when he gives some of his descendants to Moloch and they do not kill him, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and I will cut him off from his people, and I will also prostitute themselves, and whoever prostitutes themselves with him to commit adultery with Moloch. And a person who turns to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from his people. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. He said, I'm warning all seekers of demonic sources of information, willingly and unwillingly, like horoscopes. You know, the newspaper gives out a horoscope every day. Amen? Ouija boards, things that they have to gain, palm readers. I, I, don't even, I won't even touch a fortune cookie. Hello? They're cursed. All those things. It will cause a curse to come on them and their family lines. There's pornography, drugs. What's drug mean? Pharmacia, black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. It's a curse comes on the family line. He's saying, look, if you associate with anything, and if you do not expose it, hello, then you'll be accounted for it. Jeremiah 14. 14. The Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, or spoken to them. They prophesy to you a what? False vision. 
divination, a worthless thing, and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who prophesy in my name, whom I did not send, and who say, sword and famine shall not be in this land, but sword and famine, those prophets shall be consumed by sword and famine. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out into the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. They will have no one to bury them, them, nor their wives, their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness on them. These false prophets of medium music, television, books, news magazines, artificial intelligence are about to get cast out. It's coming. Amen? These familiar spirits... We must pray against all the time. Turn to 1 Corinthians 14. Everybody loves a feel good. Amen? There's nothing wrong with that. Peace, joy, and righteousness and Holy Ghost. That's feeling great. And the Bible says in verse, in verse 1, pursue what? Love. 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 Not lust. Love. And desire spiritual gifts. It's a great thing to desire spiritual gifts. Is everybody there? Okay. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. But especially that you may what? Prophesy. Release a word from the Lord. Verse 2, because there's so much controversy over the gifts and tongues that we need to straighten something out. Because this is where familiar spirits are entering and causing ca havoc, havoc in the body of Christ. A lot of false prophets, a lot of false words. Verse 2, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to who? To God. For no one understands him. Does everybody get it? Why? Why does your tongues not be understandable? Because the devil reads your mind. Amen? Okay. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So if I was to share to you while you're praying in tongues and not intercession, okay, I, can, I know what you're saying in tongues. Would that be from God or not? No. Because if you knew what was saying, that person was saying from tongues, then you'd have it in your mind and the devil would know it. Does everybody get it? So that's not true. Verse 3. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to man. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the what? The church. He said, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless he indeed interprets that the church may be, receive what? Edification. So there's three sets of, there's three areas of ministry of tongues. There's a personal edification where you pray in tongues. You pray directly to God. You don't know what you're praying because the devil doesn't know it either. And no one else is going to know it. Has everybody got it? And it brings, it increases your faith. It brings you rest. Amen. Then there's the tongues where we gather together as corporate. Now, when we pray in tongues together, we're edifying God. But then there's a settling, and someone may stand up and speak in a tongue, or even who was ever directing may speak in a tongue. And then there's an interpretation. This is where the interpretation comes from. It comes into the corporate assembly. Has everybody got it? When it comes into the corporate assembly, it is a message for the church, for that assembly. Has everybody got it? Now, you may pray in tongues yourself and get a message and speak something to someone, which is prophetic. Does everybody get it? So in this, there's three areas of tongues. There's a personal. Amen. There's the corporate. There's the gathering together. 
And your personal life, your personal tongue with what God is vital. I encourage everyone to pray in tongues. Everyone. Amen? Everyone. Tongues edifies himself, builds up his faith, refreshes, and brings revelation. <laughs> there is prophecy and interpretation as edification in a corporate gathering. That's its purpose. Let's go a little further. Let's go to uh, verse 13. Therefore, let him speak in a tongue, pray that he may what? Interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is what? Man, you don't know what the heck you're saying, and you don't know what anybody else is saying, and God is not going to give you an interpretation of somebody else's prayer. Verse 15. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray, also pray with the understanding I will sing in the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will people who occupies the space of the uninformed say amen? So I'm not going to come in here behind the pulpit and just pray in tongues and expect you to learn something. But when people come to this ministry, we explain to them that we pray in tongues. So they're not uninformed and they don't create another door. Amen? Verse 17. For you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church I'd rather speak five words with understanding that I may, that I may what? That I may what? Teach others. Like I said, I can't. Okay, everybody interpret what I'm praying. Blah, 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 blah. That ain't going to work, because God ain't going to do it. Also, then 10,000 words in tongues. Brother, do not be children in understanding, however, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to these people. Yet, for all that, they will not hear me. You know how many people are against tongues? Because they haven't been filled with the Spirit and baptized. Man, you go, when you, if you desire the gift, you go get filled and baptized with the Spirit. But I'm going to tell you what. Every one of us that began to speak in tongues, the enemy's always approached us and said, you ain't got it. You've got to receive it by faith. And as you begin to pray in tongues, the more you pray in tongues, and more and more and more, you'll sense that strength, that you'll sense that refreshing, and God will begin to impart revelation to you. And then actually, you know, the Holy Spirit will bring it up Whenever he wants to, not when you want to. Does everybody get it? He brings it up when he says, you need it. Amen? 22. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, tongues are for a sign. Not to those who, not to those who what? Believe. But to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Therefore, if a whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those who are what? Uninformed. So we inform everyone. Or unbelievers, they will not, will they not say to you, you guys are out of your mind. <laughs> but if I'll prophesy and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all. And thus, the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so, falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. Does everybody understand? See, we're battling familiar spirits right now. There's a lot of, I mean, they're, they're infiltrating everywhere. What are they doing? Changing channels on people. People are beginning to give false visions. Like the Bible doesn't say anything about a person going with another person to a person to give a word. That has nothing to do with it. You go into a person with another person because there's been offense, not with a prophecy. Amen? It's offense. And it's to heal something. And I'm not going to go with another person to another person with a word. That's out of order. And God wants things in divine order. 
you got a word from somebody, you bring it to the office. Amen? That's, a, that's divine order. There's nothing wrong with encouraging someone. Amen? We should encourage everyone. The Bible says encourage one another. But don't go up to people and tell them you got a vision of something. Now, you might have a dream or something. Most of the time, God is telling you to shut up anyways and pray about it. Or pray for that person. Not to go release it. Amen? I get a lot of visions. But I don't release them. There are times I'm counseling with someone and I have to wait on the Lord to tell me to release what I'm supposed to say or not. That's your relationship with him. Don't open the door to familiar spirits. Because it will get worse. Amen? It will get worse and you become a granola. Nutty and fruity. Looking for vision all the time instead of the Lord. Amen? Remember, we are in a time right now where the powers of darkness are battling over your remote control. Remote control. In other words, you, can't, you have control over it. Trying to change your station. Trying to change your channel. So you begin to channel other things. We are in desperate times right now to get into the presence of God and get cleaned up. Refreshed up. The enemy is trying to dismantle and contaminate our foundation. Be careful. Use wisdom. Get counsel. Amen? It's important. Don't be prideful. None of us is better than anyone else. <laughs> but everyone has a function to do. There should be unity, not division. Amen? We should promote in the things of Christ and His love and power and truth. Listen, things are about to get crazy, and we want to stand firm. Don't let the enemy steal your remote or change your channel, because he's doing a real good job at it these days. Amen? And people's perceptions are being misled and contaminated. Keep that television clean. It's the vision. It's called imagination. It's your emotion. It's your imagine. Imagine is an image. Make sure it's clean. Sanctified unto the Lord. What you're seeing, make sure it's of God. Because your soul will love to, you're battling over the soul, you're battling over emotion, your flesh is trying to take it over it, and your memory banks are trying to take it over. <laughs> and every voice from hell is out and about. Sometimes it's just better to shut up and not hear anything. Does everybody get it? Follow the word. Follow the word. Follow the word. Not your emotion. Follow the word. But the Bible says we live by faith, not by sight. Amen. Praise God. Everybody cool? Praise God. Well, we got a strategy today. Amen. We got a protection today. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory and honor and praise, and we thank you. We thank you. So, Lord, wash, wash us today, Lord. With the blood of the Lamb. Wash us with your word. You've washed us with your word. We thank you. And reset our channels. One channel. Your channel. Your communication. One heart. One mind. One will. Yours. To you. And each and every one in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.